Welcome to A1R Psychic Radio here on Moonstruck TV. You're here with Amanda Hall, psychic all the way from the Gold Coast. I hope you had an absolutely awesome week last week. Last week we celebrated the week of love, Valentine's Day, and for many of you it was a difficult time because you didn't have that someone special in your life. And I can appreciate that. It's sort of, you know, some some of the holidays are really hard for some people and other people just absolutely adore them and lap them up. So anyway, this week we're moving on. We're moving away from the planet of love. We've just gone, just about to enter into the, the time of the year called the Piscean time of the year or the end of our astrological year for, for most of us because the year actually starts with the first sign in Aries. But anyway, that's not what we're going to talk about today on today's show and talk about a lot of other things today. But let's start off with the card of the week. Now, the card of the week this week is an ambiguous sort of card. It's the Seven of Cups. Now, a lot of people sort of look at this card and they say, oh, gee, I don't know whether I particularly like this card. It's all that glitters is not gold. Look beyond the clouds and there will be, you know, you will see improvements. Look beyond the clouds because all that glitters is not gold and there is definitely money improvements. Some people sort of say that this card is like the seven deadly sins. It's got all those sort of elements in it. Other people say it's a card of fairy images. You know, are you not really paying attention? Are you not looking at things squarely enough in your life? It's entirely up to you to how you look at it. When I see this card come out in a reading, I always think, hang on a minute, let's stop, let's reassess, let's look at what's going on around us. Is somebody trying to deceive me? Is somebody not telling me the truth? And once I've got to the bottom of all this, then things will improve, whether it's money or whether it's other situations in our life, it will sort of break that sort of deadlock and things will start to improve. So this week, we're going to be talking about the full moon in Virgo. Now, look, it, it, it's, look we have full moons that happen twice uh, once a month, or if we have a, a second full moon in a month, that's called a blue moon. So it's a the, the full moon comes around roughly every 28 to 30 days. So it's something that happens all the time. And people say, why do we pay so much attention to a full moon? Well, each month it's in a different energy. And the full moon is always opposite the star sign of the month. So the star sign at the moment, we've just entered the sign of Pisces. So the opposite of that is Virgo. So it's the first you know, it's the full moon in Virgo. It's a very intense sort of moon in as much as it's a time when we really need to analyze things. It's a time when our mind and our emotions will wander possibly to the past, looking at why people say or do or perform things the way that they do. We're going to be very analytical. We're going to be very critical. We might even seem to be sort of a little bit distant or sort of emotionally shut down from people, not really sort of get engaging in that way. But this is the energy of the Virgo full moon. It's asking us to analyse. It's asking us to duck under the covers, see what's being hidden from us. Is there somebody here with an agenda? Are they only looking to feather their own nest? Are they really, do they really have our best interests at heart with what they're presenting to us? So it's a time when you need to be very, very aware of that. So the full moon, no matter where you are around this planet of ours, is the 20th. Here in Australia, that's today. For the Northern Hemisphere, it'll be tomorrow. So it is the 20th. So if we were going to be working with a full moon energy and working with some of my soy candles, how would we go about this? What I'd like you to be sort of working with is the fact that we need to be writing a list. Now, we, we, we write lists for everything. So we need to write a list about three things minimum that we wish to let go of or things that we hope to be releasing from our lives soon. Now, that could be unwanted emotion about a disagreement that you've had with someone and you just want that, um, that terrible feeling to go. You want all the issues that were connected with it to be gone. So write that in bullet point form. You know, I had a disagreement with Mary over a car. So you put that on your list. Then, you know, you might have a couple of other things that you want to release and they don't always have to be of an emotional nature. They can be simply things like I'm hoping to find, you know, I'm aiming to find ways to remove myself out of debt. That's one that we can all put on the list. I mean, you know, so many people got themselves into credit card debt over the festive season. So that's a good one. You know, how can we you know, motivate ourselves to find new ways to bring money into our lives? So whatever it is that you need to release on the full moon, this is what we're looking to release. Now, I like to work with it on this scale. I like to work two days on the approach. So from the 18th of February, I would have started my full moon ritual. So I would have burnt a candle from the 18th for two days on the approach, three days of the full moon, even though the full moon only goes two and a half days but let's round it off to three. 
and then two days on the decline. So I always work with a seven-day cycle of a full moon. So I would write two, if not three, identical lists because we're going to pop two under the candle and I like to have one there sort of at my fingertips so I can read it out. So you read out what you've got on your list. So three things that you're going to release. And I always think if you're going to release something, we want to attract something too. So then put another three things on the bottom of the list that you would like to bring towards you, things that you would like to be starting to attract into your life. So we read it out aloud. We, we write it out aloud. We read what's written on our piece of paper out aloud. We then pop our list underneath the candle on top of the coaster, definitely never directly on the furniture. We light the candle and we allow it to burn for 15 minutes to two hours per day over that seven day cycle. Now, the reasons why I ask you to burn it for that length of time is that we need to really intensify the energy and the intent, purpose and direction that we're sending out to the universe. It's no point in lighting it and wandering off and you've quickly read it out because you're in a hurry to go and do something else. This is a time when you really have to sort of sit with the candle for that length of time that you have it lit. So I believe we can all spare 15 minutes out of our day to do so. With our um, extra large candles, they have a dual wick system. I like to light one wick one day, one wick the next day. That just gives you a longer burn time and that makes your candle more economical. So that's our full moon candle. Then we would also, because we're working with the Virgo energy, we would be working with our earth sign candle. So again, the same principle applies, reading your list out, popping it underneath, on the coaster, on the table, that sort of thing again, dual wick system. So we're only going to be burning the candle again for 15 minutes to two hours a day. So we've got the identical list happening here. So this is the Virgo candle or the earth sign candle. So it works for any sort of earth sign energy that we might have. So for those of you that say to me, look, Amanda, that's great, but I don't have all that sort of room to sort of have two huge candles sitting on my table taking up so much room. We do have a travel kit or a gift box set. This week I've made it up of two earth signs and one full moon candle. You can choose any three different candles that you like from our extensive range of 28. So it's entirely up to you how you make this. Now, I just want to remind you guys that, you know, here in Australia, it's free postage on all our products. But for our overseas customers, we've just done a deal with a, another uh, freight company here and we've been able to reduce the postage cost by about 40% which is amazing news because we offer a flat fee service for all our overseas customers. So it doesn't matter how much product or whatever you buy, you can just you get to pay one price of postage. So, you know, and that's really good news that we've been able to shave nearly 40% off it. I'm really excited about that. So for those of you that don't want to work with a candle, can I suggest a milk warmer? These electric ones, you can pick them up at your department store or supermarket. Here in Australia, retail for around about $15. These have a little button on the side that you can sort of switch it on and off. So they are much safer than a candle because you're not working with a flame. When you're working with this, I suggest at the beginning of your, your cycle with this, you take a teaspoon each out of your full moon candle and your earth sign candle and start your week off that way and then half a teaspoon per day. The end of the week, just take the little tray off the top, pop it in the freezer for a couple of minutes, and then it's easier to remove the wax that way and wash it up with warm soapy water and you're ready to start again. So always, of course, never leave candles unattended around children, dogs, air conditioners, curtains, things like that. Common sense always applies to a candle. It is a flame and I never leave mine unattended. And that's where I think the electric melt warmers come into their own. They're a much safer way of working with things. So I'd like to sort of continue on our, our astrological theme. That's the full moon and how it's going to affect each and every sign. But also this week, I just wrote down some notes before the show, that we've got two major planetary configurations that I really want to talk to you about. And the first one is Neptune conjunct Mercury in Pisces. Now, Neptune's the planet of illusion or delusion. Mercury is the planet of communication, so it's in Pisces, so it's in a watery, soft, gentle, creative sign. So can I suggest anybody, and I mean anybody who might be looking to sign a contract, go into a new agreement, into a new arrangement, whether it's a professional situation, a new job, signing up for a credit card, a bank loan, whatever, please make sure that you really, really, really understand what's in the contract, read the fine print, make sure you're not being hoodwinked because any time that we have Neptune involved and particularly as being the first planet in a situation, it, we need to be aware that we could be being deceived. 
it's sort of, you know, Neptune is the planet of illusion and delusion. So I can't stress enough, if somebody's offered you something that seems too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. Make sure that you read the fine print, make sure that your communication is very clear and please hold off for another week or so before you make a final decision, if at all possible, and if at all possible before signing anything. The other one that I want to talk about today is also is Saturn conjunct Venus in Capricorn. Now, many of you know that you've been regular viewers of the show that Saturn's the planet of discipline and restriction and sort of, you know, like the father figure waving the big stick in our chart. When he's conjunct or holding hands with the planet Venus, this just means that there could be a couple of little hiccups in a relationship at the moment where we're straightening out issues that maybe have been niggling in the relationship for some time. It's a perfect time to sit down and have those conversations that you've been putting off for fear of maybe not getting your message across clearly that, you know, it's an issue that's been troubling you or something that you think you need to bring up and, and, and have ready for a discussion in a personal relationship. We're not talking about business here. We're talking about this is the time where we can get some real breakthroughs. We can get some real stability happening in our relationships if we're prepared to sort of be bear our soul, you know, show our vulnerable side, show the other person, hey, this is what's been troubling me. I didn't know how to bring it up. I hope you understand that I know that this is a fiery issue, but I really do believe that it's hindering our relationship and we need to look at this very carefully before we, you know, sort of make a decision or progress even further or how we're going to deal with such issues. So we've got two very major planetary configurations happening besides the full moon at the moment. So it is a very, very busy week astrologically. So I just want to say to you, just make sure that you're very careful if you're signing any documents, be very careful that they're, they're truthful. That also goes to the bigger picture. You know, it's going to be an interesting week probably politically around the world yet again. It seems to be we never seem to get out of that, you know, with all the the things that politics seems to sort of throw up at us. It doesn't matter which country you're in, there seems to be always something coming out of the woodwork, something that we as a nation all have to look at. So it's an interesting week in politics as well. But, you know, more importantly, I think it's a time for us to make sure that we dot all our I's and cross all our T's. So we're going to move on to our famous actress. We've been working our way around the Zodiac. This week we're up to the... I think it's our Leo actress. I'm, I really can't remember. Anyway, it's Cameron Diaz. And she started her career very, very young as a, as a model. And she started off in high school. And it was an interesting sort of choice for Cameron because it was something that she was very passionate about. She just did it for a little bit of extra pocket money and was really enjoying the attention and where it was taking her. She went on to start her career as a model. She modeled for some of the biggest um, fashion houses around the globe and some of the biggest products around the world and it was then and only then that she moved on into a film career and she's you know she's done many different types of films over the years from being a serious actor you know sort of very wide and diverse roles and it was much later in her career that she ended up moving her acting career more towards comedy and she really enjoyed those roles and she's worked alongside some of the biggest names in the industry. But one of the movies that sort of jumps out to me is the one she did with Julia Roberts and My Best Friend's Wedding. It was really a very comical movie. It was lighthearted, but there was also still a definite message behind this. And I think that's something that we, we need to very much be aware of is that Cameron Diaz has never really starred in a role that didn't have an underlying very definite message that we could all take away from the film, even though it might have been supposedly lighthearted and had a bit of comedy to it or whatever, but there was still a definite message that she was trying to convey, that she wanted people to take her seriously and really sort of understand the message that she was trying to share, and particularly with women, that we didn't need to be downtrodden, that we, we can have a voice in a positive sort of way, and we don't always have to be the most bossy out there sort of person. Even the softest, gentlest person has a voice. So. Hats off to you, Cameron Diaz. So we're going to be sort of taking our first caller now. And it's Melinia in Hartpool, England. Are you there, Melinia? Yes, I am. Hi. Hi. How can I help you today? Do you have a question for me, sweetie? Um, I just want to know, um, basically, I'm in love with the sky. We were in a relationship. Um, things fell apart. And... We're kind of seeing each other, but we're not seeing each other. And he's also seeing somebody else. 
and I just need oh, to I know see. where where this is going because it's tearing me apart and yeah, it's just messing with my whole life basically. Yeah, I can appreciate that. I can understand that. Look, the energy I'm picking up from him is I don't think he, he really wants a relationship with you or even this other person. At the moment, he's sort of playing an each way bet because he's, you know, sort of trying to decide, you know, any, many, money, mo, which one will I have? And then at the end of it, I don't think he wants either one of you. Now, now that's not a very nice thing for me to be saying about how he's treating both of you as if you're, you know, just some sort of game to him. But I think he has a number of emotional issues, which I think he's been very clever at sort of trying to hide. Now, this is when your relationship started to fall apart with him. It was as you were starting to see some of those things that he was trying to keep hidden, things that he thought he was clever enough to do, you were starting to peel back those layers. And he didn't feel comfortable with that. So that's then when he started to pull away from you and started to sort of create drama within the relationship and blaming you and, you know, finding things to find fault with that really weren't anything to find fault with. So I don't think he's capable of just being faithful to one woman. I think this is in his DNA, unfortunately. And that comes back to an emotional insecurity within himself that he doesn't really know what it is that he wants as an individual. So therefore, how can he go looking for a relationship and make somebody else happy when he doesn't know what he wants himself? So as much as it's difficult yeah. for you, and I understand that it is, I think what you've got to start doing now is try and look at this in this whole relationship in the third person. If it was your best girlfriend and you were the one looking in from the outside of the relationship, what would be your advice to her? And then I want you to start taking your own advice. And I think by being able to do that, you'll be able to sort of see clearly what the relationship is and how much he's hurt you and you, you deserve better than this. Yeah. Okay. And you know that anyway, right. just that you were hoping for something different, weren't you? I mean, I know, you know, we always hope for a different result to what we know deep down in our soul is there. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a matter of, you know, you've got to do what you believe is right at the time when you believe it's right. And I just know that you're you're halfway there to sort of taking the reins back to your own life again, which is important because what this man yeah. has done is he's literally taken you away from you. So you need to now regain that. And as you start to do that, you'll start to see this relationship more clearly for what it is. And it'll probably make you angry too that you've given so much of yourself away, but that's okay because you won't ever allow it to happen yeah. again. So look at this as a learning curve. Look at this as this, be thankful that this man's shown you your weaker side, you know, the things that you need to shore up, the things that you can change in yourself and make sure that it never happens again. I'm going to say to you, look, if we if we use a timeline like this, so, say this relationship doesn't peter out until June, you have a couple of months by yourself, you've got yourself together again. I think come September, October, I think there's going to be somebody new coming into your life who is not going to be like this. This is going to be somebody that's going to value you and you will have the type of relationship that you've always needed with somebody that truly loves you for who you are and wants to be by your side and wants to see you grow and blossom like a rose. So this is just a learning curve. Just, you know, don't try and force it to an end. Just let it come to its own natural end. And then that way you won't have too much of the letting go process at the end because you'll have already done it all. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. And don't be too hard. Okay, sweetie. And don't be too hard on yourself. Okay, okay. we're going to go to Carol in Niagara, Ontario. Are you in Canada? Are you there, Carol? I am here. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you, Carol. How can we help you tonight, sweetie? Um, yeah, um, I'm just kind of in a um, funk right now and, uh, you know, with my work and um, just what direction to go and just mm -hmm. kind of in a funny spot right now. I don't, and I can't really put my finger on it. Like I do um, energy healing and I, you know, um, I do... Um, um, meditation and stuff, and nothing really seems to be helping. I don't know why. Okay, it's probably called what I like to affectionately call it a funk. It's a time when nothing seems to be sort of moving, you know, like you're just sort of sitting there. You're yeah. not stuck in mud, but it's sort of like nothing that I'm doing is giving me any great inspiration or any guidance or any direction for where I'm going to go. Look, I'm, I'm, 
I'm right. not, not against meditation. I think that's absolutely fantastic and we all have our own different ways of meditating. But sometimes that, that's not about getting answers for ourselves either. It's just about being. It's about allowing ourselves to just be still. It's not always about sort of, you know, some great insight coming into us in that way. And the interesting thing is when you're a healer and when you're in the psychic sort of industry, we all tend to be so hard on ourselves thinking that we should always have every single solitary answer and be able to know where we're going all the time, that we forget that we are human as well. And that's, that's yeah. the level that you're at. That's what you're at at the moment. It's like nothing's coming to you and you think, well, what's wrong with me? What am I blocking? You're not, you're not blocking anything. I think actually what's happened here, Carol, is that you've been such a good girl and you've done your lessons so well. You're actually ahead of the timetable, you know, of what the universe set out for you to do. You've actually beaten, you know, all your little tasks and, you know, got them all ticked off probably six months ahead of the time that you were, you were allocated for that. So now you've just got to sit there and just wait, wait for everything to sort of catch up before the next layer unfolds. So enjoy it, I think. I think enjoy this time where you haven't really got any major things that you need to sort out or fix up or look at or start at the moment. Just enjoy this peaceful downtime. I know it's not going to last for much longer. I'm sort of seeing towards the end of April, I think things are going to really start revving up again. Okay. I don't know that meditation is going to necessarily be something that you're going to spend as much time on from that point. And it no. may just be more, more because I think time's going to be in short supply. Now, I'm not saying you won't do any. What I'm going to say is where you might have allocated, say, half an hour before for meditation, there might only be a time allowance of 10 minutes. So it's not saying that you won't get the benefit of it. It's just saying that you'll find a way of, fast tracking it so that you can get in get out and get on with what you need to do and you'll be really well, surprised how that Sagittarius <laughs> oh you're another Sag yeah. you like me yeah well we like um, in, in great speed so this will be sort of like the Sagittarian meditation you know something that we can do in three minutes or ten minutes at the maximum That's and right. then we're off <laughs> on to the next yeah you're and right. you know being a fellow and being a fellow Sag as I am too this is our year, sweetie. It's a year where Jupiter's back in our own sign, first time in 12 years. But it's not necessarily is it going to be every month of this 12 months that we're going to have some great, amazing opportunity happening. We've got to learn that, you know, that we can't be busy the whole 12 months either, that, you know, there will be things that will come. And when it comes, we've got to be ready to go. So this is your little rest period. I'm yeah. seeing something new as of from the end of April. And I just sort of okay. feel as if there's new work coming. There's, I don't know whether there's a change of what I call the day job or changes with yeah. the day yeah. job that then enable you to be free enough in yourself to be able to explore other areas of things that interest you more, like your healing, like your meditations. I just sort of feel you're going to take up something else later this year as well. It's going to put you onto a different path yet again, which is really positive. They're showing me uh, a well, question mark like around. Your, are you planning on around. moving? Uh, no, I haven't um, uh, contemplated moving. Well, all. then you must be going to change um, where you're living in some way because they're showing me changes around where you're living. They're showing me sort of like uh, question marks and it's like, oh, I hadn't thought of that. Oh, that looks exciting. Oh, yeah. I could do that. And it's sort of like, yeah, no, I, I don't know. Yeah, we hadn't. And it, yeah, well, that's a, I'll, you know, think about that. But no, we hadn't thought about moving. Because um, I'm still working uh, part time, but I kind of, you know, wanted to do um, maybe some retirement, but I'm not sure financially if that's, you know, going to work. And so I've been going kind of towards Reiki doing that. And mm -hmm. oh, I don't know. It just seems like I'm stalled. Okay, well, I want to go back to just enjoy this rest period between now and the end of okay. April because once we get to the end of April, everything's, you know, more than full steam ahead. So I think just, okay. you know, allow yourself to just be. I, I still, I okay. don't know that you're necessarily going to give up the day job, but you might wind that back to even less than what you're doing in a casual, you know, a part-time sense at the moment. Casual. And sort of start yeah. to have some of your other 
interest sort of take over to sort of make up the shortfall for the finances. But I wasn't definitely yeah. saying you were moving. What I was saying, if you didn't move house, there's movement within the place that you're living or changes or things being reorganised or oh. looking at different things. Okay. And that could very well yeah. be just setting up a roof for you to work out of. Do you know what I mean? Like, well, I was thinking that, yeah. Yeah. That, you know, that's what that. I mean. I, I had question marks that. around that. Is this going to work? Is yeah. this the right thing to do? All those sort of things. And it's sort of like that comes in after the end of April. I'm not saying don't allow okay. thoughts to come into your mind now, but okay. what I'm saying is just, you know, give yourself as much yeah. rest as you can between now and then and jot down your ideas and then look at, you know, when things start to open up and come quickly, then we, we jump on the horse and we go for it. Yeah, okay, well, that's, I appreciate it. I appreciate okay, it. Sweetie. Lovely to talk with you, Carol, and I, I look forward okay. to hearing your, your, your new exciting opportunities that unfold for you in 2019. Thank, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Well, we've almost come to the end of the show again. It, by the time does go quickly. So for those of you that might want a private reading with me, head to my website, www.amandahallpsychic.com.au. Type in the word radio when you get to the coupon box and you will get a discount. For those of you that would like to know a little bit more about the full moon in Virgo, you can join me over on Facebook Live on my Amanda Hall page directly after this broadcast finishes for a workshop on the full moon in Virgo. On next week's show, we'll have our Simply Tarot card of the week. We'll have our candle of the week. And we'll also have a little glimpse around the universe and we'll look at our famous actor in the next part of our astrology series. So I hope until then that you enjoy your week wherever you are. Here in Australia, we're sort of getting ready where I live on the Gold Coast, getting ready for a weather event coming by the weekend. We've got a cyclone heading towards us. So it's sort of time to sort of make sure we've got the groceries all stocked up and plenty of water and get ready for deluge of rain and I might say we definitely need it here we haven't had very much rain at all this year so wherever you are in this world of ours make sure that you're kind to each other you smile you open a car door do something that people wouldn't expect you to do out of a gesture of kindness because love and being kind to one another certainly does make the world go round and until next week bye for now <laughs>